Okay. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us on our Mother's Day event. And this is all about, well, it's a lot about what are we going to be doing to refresh the lower face. And the real solution to this is actually the whole face needs to be refreshed. Um, and I want to show some examples of the things we do. Now, just so everybody kind of knows what this webinar is about, and I know there's a lot of people on and there's going to be some people joining. We are going to be offering some really awesome things. And the, the biggest thing is when you do working in the office with us, um, we're going to be doing a free level of Disport, and that's a $325 special uh, savings when you do one wrestling. If you do two wrestlings, it's $15.50, and you get a level two, so you get even more. If you do three wrestling products, then you're going to end up getting a level three, and that's the full face. So that's the one I would go for because that's a $725 special. So please take advantage of it. We love giving away some of these things because it's it's a lot of fun for us. And those of us who know our office, we are all about having fun and really making everybody look good and feel good. So we have a special mother today and I'm gonna show you over there. This is Christina, she's a new mother and we are going to freshen her up. Now I will tell you, we're gonna do one side of her face and she is in her 30s. So I am gonna talk about different age groups and what you typically will see she's in the business she's so she's she knows all this stuff so she is wanting full correction where most people come in for certain things and certain age groups need certain things so i'm going to talk about that so let's go ahead and really quickly everybody knows i love my skeleton views let's pop those up because i really want to talk about this one. Oh, and by the way if you aren't listening listen we are doing a full face giveaway um, with the galderma products and that's going to be with Christina. So somebody's going to win that tonight. And that can be up to $5,000 worth of product. So absolutely, I'm glad you joined because you all are eligible now. So this is a really good photo of what happens with the shape of the head and skeleton as we age. As we age, we really do change tremendously. One of the things that is most striking is really the jawline in this particular picture, but that's really something we're going to see in our older women. So when you look at this picture, think more fine tuned. You're going to see how the eye socket, the first red line that's higher up, is actually the eye socket elongates. So when you see a bigger hollow there, there's going to be more darkness around the eyes. And traditionally, when the younger people in their 20s and 30s come in, that's what they're coming in for. So a younger person will tend to come in because they feel like they have tired eyes, or dark, dark circles, or bags under their eyes. And the reason they're seeing this is the, the bone changes we think is what's happening. And it's kind of been a progression of, you know, why are the bones changing? It's actually the tendon is attached to the bone, and then the muscle is attached to the, our eyeball, which is our, our little globe. So when you're looking, 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 and since we're very visual animals, people are our main sense is seeing, the globe is always moving, so it's always pulling on the, the muscle, the tendon, and then the bone. The bone remodels, and it changes the shape. So there is a huge shape, shape of change as we age. And a lot of the stuff I do in the office is actually to rejuvenate the shape, or at least give the impression that this is a younger shape. And we can fool a lot of people with this. You know, it is a camouflage technique, but it definitely works. Now, on the lower face, the other thing that happens is actually the mouth is very active. So all the muscles, there's a circular muscle around the mouth. It's called Orbis chlorius aureus. And I always love saying that name just because it's sort of like the little kind of down, dances off your tongue. Um, so what happens is this Orbis chlorius aureus, it is our demise later because it's the one that gives us the little uh, vertical lines or the smoker lines, which, you know, most people don't smoke anymore. Um, but you see them um, no matter what, if somebody smokes or not, you know, drinking on those bottles, those will also give you those kind of lines. So when we see younger people, you're going to see mouth lines at just beginning, but you kind of end up seeing a little bit more of the parentheses around the face. Um, but that is the very typical thing that people will hone in on, is eyes and mouth. That's, the, that's what they see in the mirror. If you have come to my office, you know the mirror is definitely one of the aspects that we're going to look at with the face, but it's really the whole face. This is our other slide that is depicting a young skeleton on the far left, and then we have older versions of uh, skeletons. Now, look at how robust that, that light bulb shaped head is, you know, and that's what we're really trying to get. In order to get a good lower face, it's actually you want a good upper face. Um, that is the real key, but 
that is not always attainable. So we have to kind of camouflage as much as we can because that's really what we're doing in aesthetic medicine. Um, so you're going to see a big change again with the eye sockets. Look at those aviator glasses on the far right over there. You know, those eye sockets, somebody's really a looker there. They, they're looking, 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 pulling on it, and they really made those sockets hollowed out. So they're going to have ginormous, you know, bags under their eyes. They're going to have a lot of hollowing. They're going to have a lot of discoloration because they're, they're, you're just actually going to see the muscle and maybe a little fat popping up, if, you know, on the skin. So the skin is like the fabric on top of the skeleton. And now, the good news today is we don't have dentation problems like these two skeletons. You know, most of us in our civilized, uh, especially uh, South Florida area, most people do get their teeth taken care of. And that is a huge structural issue that is very important in maintaining the lower face. You know, when somebody comes in and, you know, even if your lips are just slightly off, if we go and look at the teeth, you can usually tell where it's coming from. It's usually like one tooth is just a little more forward, another tooth is a little further back, or there's a little bit of an overbite, and that just makes everything kind of cattywampus on the outside. So it just kind of augments whatever's on the inside that's a little bit off, augments as it goes outwards. So those are the things that I'm always looking at. Some of the things we can correct, some of them we can't. So, but I really want people to understand it's about the shape is the most important thing and that's the that's the dictator of what we're working on. So when we work on the mouth, we want to get rid of those little lines. We want to make the eyes not look so hollowed out. We're going to use some of these products and we are going to do full face correction. But, you know, when we're thinking lower face, you got to think that basically lower faces where age lands. You know, the neck is the ultimate endpoint <laughs> for the neck uh, is where we see the crepiness, the bands. The, the laxity of the skin, everything ends up here and it's the jowls. And you can understand that when you're looking at the shape change, when you have this really large upper face and everything kind of uh, doesn't have the support, everything's just going to slide right down here. So that's why we get jowls and the fat pads come down and you get a little bit hangy pouches there. So let's look at some young people. I think we're gonna have to, oh, that, yeah, that was me. I was the young person, not really. Um, okay, so we all know Jennifer Aniston and she. this is when she's in her 20s and in her 30s. And you can see there's a little bit of change in her shape. Oh, is there no sound? No, we have the microphone on. Um, if anybody is not hearing, please do a chat with us real quick. You might, if you're not having a uh, sound, you may want to try um, switching your phone uh, on the side. Not, uh, let me show you real quick. Like you want to do this one on and off. Definitely you've got to go up with this. And I think we all know the volume thing, but go on and off with your, with your body, with your ringer tone thing. That might, and if you're still having problems, let me know, but it, we do have the sound on. So I'm hoping everybody hears, but if you're not, please let us know because we can always start over. We know I can talk about this stuff forever. Um, so Jennifer Aniston. Now, one of the things that you see that's kind of striking is her shaping is changing a lot because of actually, one, she's more elongated, but she's losing some of her baby fat. And that happens as we get older. You know, we kind of like it when we're in our 20s going to 30s that you're losing the baby fat because it looks a little sleeker. It looks a little bit more adultish. But then later it actually becomes again our demise and we end up losing too much fat and we end up just not having that softness anymore. You know, so a lot of the stuff we do today is the devices, you know, like our cool peel, that CO2 laser that makes the skin look super soft, the microneedling radio frequency that tightens up the skin and gives you more collagen build. It gives better luminescence, but it also gives kind of a softer texture to the skin. Now on her, you can see the difference between her mouth, like even her mouth, like her upper lip is getting thinner and that's just a decade of change. Her eyes actually are a little more hooded on top. So you're seeing these things that are, you know, she's still gorgeous, she's beautiful, and she's still beautiful today. But even when you think today and you see her on those commercials, she really does look older, but it's like our brain can identify them. So our job in here is really to help kind of push back the clock a little bit and make people think we're younger than we are because it looks healthier. Um, and I know it's, it's so, you know, everybody has their opinion on what they think about that stuff, but it really is what it is and everybody wants to look good at the end of the day. Now, let's go ahead and go to our, now this is more of what we see in the office and these are people that are models and they are 
models of different older age groups, but you can see how people do age differently. And there's no doubt that if you saw them, you would say, oh, this person is older. You know, there's, there's, our brain is just too smart. And it's a lot of, and even though they really don't have a lot of sag, it's probably the thinness in their face, the way that they're, they're more anterior forward with their fat pads at the front of the face. You know, they have a little bit more like problems around the mouth, it looks like. One of the things that I think is really um, significant that people don't really realize, we look more exaggerated when we animate when we're older. So like if you smile huge, you got this huge gigantic grin on, you know, we love it. We want people to smile, but sometimes you're seeing molars and that is definitely an, a giveaway. And these are just cues that our brain notices, our co subconscious brain notices. The conscious brain doesn't realize what's happening, but the subconscious is what rules our world. So sometimes you see really exaggerated eyebrows. They're just, you know, they're way up in the in the air, you know, because that's that's what happens is there's like an unopposed muscle and fat in the way of these muscles moving the, the, the eyebrows up or the cheeks out. So when we fill, we actually are causing a little bit of a restriction. And sometimes that's negative. So when somebody's overfilled, they're so restricted, they can't talk or they look like they're stiff and, you know, it's not an attractive look. So it kind of is what we want to do, but we want to do it in a positive way. So this is kind of, you know, it's the whole face that's involved with the lower face. But the lower face really takes the beating at the end of the day when you're when you're thinking, do I need a facelift? And some people need a facelift. You know, do you get a facelift or not? And it's really a very personal choice. You know, I am trying to keep myself together, but I live here, so I, you know, I, I understand that I get the option of doing things more regularly. You know, sometimes you do have to get a little extra skin removed. And they do, if you're gonna do it, you do a nice a SMAS facelift, which is like a deeper plain facelift. But it really it does change the, the whole look of the face. Once you start getting facelifts, jawlines are changing, and I, it's very obvious to me, but you know, I'm in the profession, so most people do look a lot better. Um, again, our goal here is to try to be non-surgical for as long as we can, and then we turn over to the surgeon, and then you have to come back, because we still have to fill even after that. So we are going to be doing, um, no, this is just another cool little tidbit of, of what happens as we age. You still can be gorgeous at any of these ages. It's just a matter of there are just different things that change. You know, like in the 20 year old, maybe the lips are the big issue. And as the lips do go hollow quicker, again, eyes and mouth are the two things that go first. When you're in your 30s, you start losing some of the, the baby fat and you start sinking down. So you're probably losing some of the baby fat up in the higher up planes. You're losing that skeletal change. And so everything's just beginning to slide down a little bit. If you lose weight, you're going to kind of speed it along a little bit quicker. And I will tell you, um, our new mom over here has been on a very strict diet and she's losing weight and she actually is kind of dropping. So this is like a good thing that she's getting this done. It's going to help her feel better about what she's seeing. And it also kind of rewards her for her good dieting. Um, now, our 40 year old in this picture, now she's in her 50s, Jennifer Aniston again, um, you know, she really is. Um, she is a timeless beauty, you know, but there are different changes. We already saw her when she was in her 20s and her 30s, and now in the 40s, she really does look very different. You know, you see a lot more elongation of the face, and it's again because you have lack of support higher up. So you get a little bit more, and I don't want to say it because I always make fun of myself. So people who know me, I was like, oh, my horse chin. We get a little horsier in the chin. You know, everything looks a little longer, and it's more of a long line instead of a nice little crisp like we see with the 20 year old there, that nice little 45 degree angle. So we try to correct those things because it does make a difference when people just glance at us, they think you're younger than you are. And that's kind of part of the goal. So we are going to look at our very pretty girl here and we're gonna roll her forward, Amanda. She's gonna roll herself here. <laughs> okay, let's stop right there. All right, so Christina is going to have half of her face done and then we'll do some question and answers and I'll finish her up afterwards since I don't want to keep you guys all night. I appreciate you coming on. So I always kind of look at somebody and say, what is the side that I feel is the bad side? And there's no such thing as a real bad side, but there's one side that tends to get a little more beating than others. And we kind of talked about it earlier and I, it, and she's with me like almost every day, but we still have to always talk everything out before we do anything. Now we had talked about it and to me, 
let me see. Everything's kind of backwards here. Um, I, I feel like, and she feels both, that her left side, which is our side over here, this side is, I'm sorry, I think I said over here. Um, our left side is, is the side that's a little more problematic. And I can see that a couple of different ways. And I'm kind of looking at it from upside down because one of the places you're going to see it is actually you always will have a little extra hang in the neck here. So this will hang a little bit lower. 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 One more time. This will hang a little bit lower. And it's usually, to me, I find it the people that sleep on one side more. And it's the side our little bowling balls are laying out all night that are just crushing it, and this is what happens. So in order to fix her, when you look at her, she really is quite beautiful here. And she's beautiful everywhere, honestly. But it's kind of, she feels like this area tends to be the bad area, which is really typical. People kind of attack this area because they see it. Now, our job is actually to fix here, is to fix up here first. So I'm going to actually use a product called Sculptra. Sculptra actually has got new FDA indication for more facial uh, enhancement volumizing. And we're going to go ahead and give you my gloves, please. Amanda's going to help us. Amanda, yes. <laughs> she does our PA. Amanda's our nurse practitioner. Hi. So those of you who have not met either one of them, these are our beautiful girls, and they're here to help you too. So we are going to go ahead and work on the left side, because that's a side that is a little bit more problematic for it. And let me see. You can also see that she has more squareness up here. This is a little bit flatter over here. Um, we've done pretty much everything on her, so she kind of knows um, the feeling of all this. And we are going to inject what we're doing. If everybody doesn't like injections to watch them, then you know you can always turn this off or go get some food to eat and come back. Um, but we're going to go ahead and work higher to make the lower look better. Now, that is the best thing that I've ever kind of identified as I've gotten many years into this business is that the more indirect you work, actually, the better the results are. So we are going to go ahead and get started here. She's already been cleansed, but we're going to go ahead and we always cleanse while we're working. Okay, so when I use Sculptra, Sculptra is a product that's been around since 2004. It is, are we having, are we still okay with the uh, voice? Okay, good. Um, we use a, a lightning here that just keeps us from having as many bruises. And nobody likes to be bruised. And bruising actually usually hurts when you get the, a needle and you take a vessel. So I'm going to start a little bit higher. Now, the products that I use 99% of the time, I'm using them off label. And they are indicated for the face and facial rejuvenation, but the way I, that I do them, I tend to always go a little bit different. And um, I've been doing it for years, so I, I find this very safe. Um, but it does give us a little better result, and that's kind of what we're looking for. And we're not sacrificing anything to get that better result. So I'm going to be raising her up a little in this area to get a little bit of lower face lift. So now she's a little hard to get into because she probably has some stuff in there in the past. She probably has more not her in here than her. Okay, so the product that we're using Sculptra, do you have a mm -hmm. Why don't you show them what it looks like? Okay, so that's what it looks like when they're reconstituted, but it comes as a powder, and we put fluid in it, and it's by this type of water mixed with a little bit of lidocaine, and we normally put 9 cc's of fluid in it. 90% you know, of it is going to be bacteriocytic water. And a little bit of the lidocaine, just to kind of help it. Are you doing okay? Okay. Um, it's kind of weird. What I'm doing is very strange. People are always like, oh, that's a weird one. Um, and it is, you know, uh, but when you think about it, we're just kind of doing out of parameter of the face. And I'm using something called a cannula. It is not a needle, so people are not going to have um, cutting going on in here. It, it, you can have some bruising. You can have uh, bruising, but nothing like you do with a needle. Okay, let's take a picture. Oh, okay, we already are seeing a little bit of change here. Actually, you know what the opportunity to get me that is I'll have to get out of the mm -hmm. I always share this experience with the patient because I think it's really important for everybody to be involved with this. And wow. That's pretty awesome. Okay, then you put in there and you can just hang on to it, okay? Mm -hmm. Keep it hang on. Yep. Okay, so 
seeing the different sounds. And I definitely like Christina to look at it because she is my PA and she I respect things that she says and she says, Hey, you know, what about this? I'll listen to her and I will listen to patients because I think everybody has a good input. It's just a matter of, you know, can we fix it the way they want me to fix it, you know, or do they want me to diverge from that? So already is giving her more shape here. So everybody can see you, surf right where everybody can see you. And see how it's already changed the shape in here. It's in the eyebrows. Yeah, and everything's going up. This is going up, this is going up. And I will be doing the other side, so don't worry. <laughs> Even when she smiles, it actually changed. Now everything is up, and I have used a third of the black. Yeah. So let's get going here. And I'm only going to do probably one vial for both, you know, total here. I don't really need two vials, I don't think. All right. Actually, just throw out more here. I'm going to open up these and wait. So, again, my goal is how am I going to make it look better down here? Because ultimately, that was what we were going to be talking about. And I'm going to pinch a little more here. I'll leave that kind of hurts there. It's a little outsy spot. And sometimes, if somebody's really having a bad time, I would tell you we have nitrous gas. We have, um, I can use lidocaine to, to numb it. You know, Christina's been through this a lot, so she's pretty okay with all these little folks. You know, as you keep doing this stuff and you get more used to it, it bothers you a little bit less, and um, you don't mind the folks as much because you know something good is coming. That's kind of a, a sick way, but <laughs> it is what it is. Um, there we go. So I'm just using my cannula, and I'm kind of just doing this outer panel back there because I need to create that support system that she is losing. She has lost a lot of weight and it's kind of coming, you can kind of see how she doesn't have a good definition back here on her jelly. So I want to establish, so Sculpt is gonna grow collagen. So not only is it growing collagen, it actually kind of um, will kind of give more shape to the face. It'll also give a little more glow to the face too. Now I'm gonna stop with that. Good, go ahead and sit up for everybody. Let's go to a little contour for her. Yeah, that's pretty good. It is interesting how it's such a change when you see one side to the other. Like she's starting to get yeah. more contour here, and now already she's starting to look a little more sleek here, which is it's a more attractive and more sophisticated look. I need to open this. Okay, thank you. And we're going to go ahead and put just a drop up here. She's missing just a teeny bit of cheek here. And I'm going to put a new gauze here. Thank you very much. So again, I have a little alcohol always wiping. We need it to always stay nice and hygienic, always. This is never sterile, but it is a very clean uh, procedure. And on top of it, the face has got such a good blood supply. People don't get infected with this, thank goodness. We would have never maintained the 30 years that I'm in practice if that were the case. So I'm up here, um, she has a nice little pimple here for us, and yeah. I'm actually right below it. And I am just putting a little teeny bit, and I'm just trying to get it a little bit deeper. And we want to give her a little more dramatic cheek shape. She is kind of our high drama girl. Mm -hmm. and she knows it, so she doesn't mind me saying that. Yeah. But it gives a lot more of a zoom, you know, like a... I love that. Yeah, and I think... She's going to be going to the, uh, the races yes. in next week, so she has to look very hot, even though she's married. But very <laughs> nice guy. Still, we always want to represent, you know, up to the, up to the formula. After the Formula One races. Yes. You know, it, it it's a. Uh, you know, it's a little regional what we all do, um, but I think everybody likes to have high cheekbone. Um, let's see, sit up for us. All right. Wow, you can start seeing it now. Oh, yeah. So it's giving us this like, shape yes. right up here. And what it's doing for our lower face is it's starting to give us also more lift back here. Now, down here, this is contour. It's, it's actually meant for the cheeks, and it is a shaping product. I'm kind of done with this. I don't want her looking big. I don't want her looking heavy with this. She's doing a lot of work. Go ahead and take that off on me. And let me have um, some lift. We don't want her looking heavy. And sometimes when people are done and they have it all in the front, they look super heavy. And it's kind of like when somebody has really large breasts 
and they have a little waist. You never see the waist. They just look like ginormous bras, and they end up looking really heavy and they're, when they're not. All right, so we are going to actually add a little more jawline to her. And this is just cruising along here. I'm doing a lot of chalking. Normally, in the um, this would have been about a 10 minute event for us. So hopefully, I'm giving you lots of good information here. How long does the sculpture last? Ooh, good question. So the question is, how long does sculpture last? Sculpture truly lasts two years. I I promise you that. Now. Are you going to not be here in two years? No. Um, what happens is we keep aging. Age doesn't stop. And it really has to be fully corrected if you're going to say that it's going to last two years. And I don't use one product for anything. I don't use one device for anything because it's kind of like I always talk about. It. It's like a, it's like cooking food. You don't just cook tomatoes for tomato sauce. You're putting a little garlic, a little pepper, a little spice in there, a little oil. So everything is important. So one thing alone isn't gonna isn't gonna be the wow. It's going to be improving, but it's the combination that's the real wow. Okay. So we're creating a little more sharper jawline. I don't want to see her neck, and and when you see the neck, it, it you know it tends to look fuller, even if it's not. It will because it's a straight line. Otherwise, mm -hmm. let's see if we have a straight line on that side. Mm -hmm. nah, not so much, but there's a little bit of a straight line right here. Yeah. And this one is already breaking, so we're already starting to have a little bit of a break. You can hold that for me, please. Thank you. Good. Okay, sit up right again. Okay, so see how we're now having this jawline that's starting to get a lot more contour to it, and I'm not getting a visual of her neck as much now. I'm going to finish it right here. Thank you. And I am actually going to use a little contour in the chin. And we're going to work on the lips. So we love fillers. We love devices. We've already talked about those. We also love the toxins. And we call them toxins today because there's four and there's going to be the fifth one out. And we're going to be using Discord as a great one for the lower face. Discord is also a governmental product. And what it does, and I'm just creating a little sharper jawline for her. It's probably a little uncomfortable there for her, I would imagine. She's being very stoic and good for the camera, but I would be questioning about the bad words. Um, and I'm just getting right in here. She is doing so good. Do you mind just clarifying your asking is this sculpture being used on top of the neck? On top of the neck, no. Uh, the Sculpra is not a good neck product. Um, it is a good from here to probably here. Neck, not good. And then what are you using on the jawline? Okay, this is wrestling lip, and this has a lot of oomph to it. So contour is a softer oomph. This is a harder oomph. Um, the neck is better with the Discord, which is going to relax this band, and it's also better with devices, so that would be cool feel. It would be Morpheus, it would be Virtue, this microdina radio frequencies, um, O-therapy. Those are the things that you want to use more for the neck proper. I use threads. I use the threads to lift the face. I use the threads to pull it up. But you kind of have to put those in hidden places, too. But Clifford does not do well in the neck. And I know people like to cry it, and I have cried it as wine that's not in the neck. So don't make my mistakes if you're out there listening to your provider. Don't do that, please. It will have little crunchy things in the neck and it's not practice. Um, and she's still missing just a drop right here. Okay. So, I'm just going to hang still. Maybe. The hardest part is putting the pen on the opening. Okay, and this is a little tough. Now, there is a little scar tissue in right there, and it's probably from past material. And it's just normal, that's just what happens. Okay, so, thank you. Wrestling, it really depends on age. If you're in your 20s to 45, it's going to last you a good year and a half. If you're 45 to 60, you've got like nine months. After 60 plus, it's hard to tell. Everybody's a little bit different. You know, unfortunately, it's an age discrimination thing for sure. I'm not appreciating it at all, but it is. The younger people do last longer. It's not fair, but it is what it is. 
Um, go set up right and let's take a peek at it. Okay, wow, look at that. Wow, wow, wow. So it's really interesting because you are seeing the before and then you're seeing the after. And you just see the change in the shape and what it does yeah. to the image in your brain. All of a sudden, your brain like, oh, that looks so good. You know, it's just like the brain likes these things. And I mean, that's kind of what our job is, is to research out what, what looks good and we do it. Um, now, we're going to do something a little bit more. Wow. I mean, it really from this my view on her. Like this whole side is starting to loose right. up and it's just, it's gorgeous. It really is. It is. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's just kind of like, I know, it's so confusing about all these things. That's why I just like, I think I'm going to say, I can't go. Okay, I'm going to make a little opening here. Also, it can be a little uncomfortable in the chin. Chin hates all these little folks, but it really means that I've never seen anybody who has a the, the chin like that. Um, oh, okay, so what? This is the worst of it is a little bit in there. Um, and yeah, I'm going to see. Uh, actually, yeah, I'll use it this way. So around the mouth area, you can use kiss, you can use contour, you can use regular resting, you can use resting lip. There's a lot of choices on this one. But what I'm doing and what my plan is for her at the moment is I actually want to go in here. I want to project her more here. She has a little bit of a dive in, and it will just look more attractive than seeing her right here. Um, go back to Sculptor, because somebody was asking about Sculptor is a is a product that's called polyalactic acid, and it is reconstituted, and if you leave it, you put it in with fluid, the fluid absorbs after two or three weeks, and you actually go collagen, and usually we see results in about a month, month and a half, but I always give it a full two months just to make sure somebody's a steel grower, and it does, it does change the whole look of the face, it's beautiful. Um, it has been just a fantastic product from the legal stores. And at this point, nothing has really competed with it. So I'm in this really, it's actually called a tight space because it's kind of a tough area to get into. And it pretty hurts up there out here. She's being very brave. But see, it, it's kind of elongating her chin ever so slightly, which is just giving her a little more balance. A lot of what I do is kind of rebalance her face a little bit. Okay. That is a thing that, uh, so we were talking because she felt like the side of her mouth was a problem, and the side of the mouth is a problem mostly because the side of her face is a problem. Again, every single thing is affected, and it just augments the effect as it keeps rolling downhill. Um, so this is the downhill spot. It's, it's, it's interesting. They look something like this off now as they did before. They kind of pulled it up a little bit. So we're going to put a very big needle on here. We are going to put a drop in for the lip. Do I have a Okay, so other things that we like, like I was saying, is we like the neurotoxins for the mouth. Go ahead and show us yes. Now, she's a little blunted here because of two reasons. One, because I just put something in here that has lidocaine in it. So sometimes right after you get a treatment, you're, you're like, oh, no, I can't move, something's wrong. It's just the lidocaine that's part of it. But the other thing is, remember what I was saying earlier, that when somebody has a, a product in an area, it blunts the motion. So you can't move it on his heart. Like, I think that I haven't done that in a while. So you can move it like that. You really see it. She can't do it as much on this side. She's doing it more accentuated on this side. But we don't love this, this look here. Nobody likes to look sad like that. And the more we eliminate the sad things of the face or you know, the implications of what somebody is doing, um, the better it looks for the face. Let me take a look at you from afar. Oh, this is looking so good. Pull down again. So it's not doing it quite as bad, but we want to knock this out, and we're going to do it with a neurotoxin, and this is going to be dysport. So again, she has a lot of bubbly stuff in the chin. Mm -hmm. We call it many different things, mm -hmm. cobblestone uh, I don't know, orange, orange peel. We, usually we'd say really mean names for all this <laughs> stuff. Um, so those are too horrible. So we're going to use the dysport to stop that. We're not going to let her pull her chin in like that, and there's really nothing she needs to pull her chin in for like that. So I'm going to put a little on her chin, and this will take a couple of days to be effective. Go ahead and do that. And go ahead and go right here. She is a little crooked on the chin, and I'm going to probably fix that afterwards because she is a little lower on this side, and this side needs a little bit more to bring her down. 
So she was pulling this and I want to kind of get rid of it. And the place I inject is actually way back here because this is where it attaches down here. So I'm really hitting the muscle. I'm not hitting the action, I'm hitting the muscle of what's happening. So sometimes when people are frying, they're like, hit that. It's not where we're trying to hit, we're trying to hit the muscle that creates that. Can you give us a rough idea of what the cost would be for what you're doing on Christina today? Okay, let's see. Um, she's going to use a vial sculpt drug total. So that's um, 875. The contour, that one is 875 too. The jawline, that one is seven, 675, I believe. I'm, I'm not the one who normally does any of the prices, so I'm, I, maybe they can tell so probably a full face, like I said, you know, if somebody runs a full face, it could be up to 5,000. Most people will tell you, and I'm gonna say, most people that come in, they will spend um, anywhere from 500 to probably 3,000, depending on what they need. If they don't need that much, they don't spend that much. If they need a lot, and as you get older, you need a lot, you can get higher than that. It really just depends on what you need. And you know, of course, we're trying to always have expressions for everybody because it's it's important. It's important. Um, so I'll put a little here, and I'm going to get the other side. I might as well do it right now. I got her here, and then I'm just going on the back side. This is called the Crested Angularis, or this here, and it is going to keep her from pulling down so hard. So the last thing we're going to do is actually put a little more lips on her. She actually has really nice lips, so it's not like she's missing lips for the rest of the world. Most people do not have the lips she has to start with. You're actually better off using a needle for the lips. Let's see you smile. Boy, they do look a lot better. I'm not going to use that much on her because she does look good. And uh, the worst thing you can do is overdo it and mix it in that way. So if I... Okay, now on her, just gently open it up, get to it. A little bit before I go ahead and just watch it real quick for me. We just kind of look and make sure there's no weird vessel that shouldn't be sitting there. Just a little bit. And little pinches, but it's not horrible. Mm -hmm. As you're working on the lips, can you tell us what will address the lines around the mouth the best? The best is actually the lasers, you know, the, the micro radio frequency. So if you have a little barcode, remember I was saying this is like an area that gets a lot of wear and tear because of chalk and the heat, and we're always using this area. Um, the barcodes, okay, so any muscle you have, so you have a circle, but it's really they're kind of linear, they're linear. You're always going to see the lines, like the eyes, this is also a circular muscle, the lines will go perpendicular, always. This is the way the skin folds. So, um, you can relax it with some toxin. Don't rub it in the mouth. Sometimes you lose a little bit of the function. It can kind of speak here. Um, you know, as we get older, we talk, start talking science anyway. You can see, I probably do. Um, but that, that happens more when you're getting the, the. So I don't like putting it so much in there. You know, I know a lot of people like to do the lip lift with yeah. the toxin. You know, if somebody has a super gummy smile, I definitely want to put a little discord in, in here and bring it down. Well, I don't. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> okay. Um, but you definitely, the chin needs it almost always. Neck as you get older, you have to do it. Um, I would rather sacrifice upper face toxin and make sure that we do the neck sometimes because it really, again, the neck is where everybody recognizes age. So we're going to go back open gently. I'm just going to go a little over here. I'm just going to some drop. Well, right in the flight, and it hurts a little, but she's being tough. And I'm just kind of rolling it out. I know, I'm sorry. Wow, it looks beautiful. How do you feel about injecting the mastodon muscle with the toxin for TMJ? Oh, love it, love it. So, we definitely do a lot of TMJ injection for functional improvement. You know, the headaches are just so much better, the thinning of the face. Because sometimes, you know, one of the things that we see when somebody gets older is they just get these, you know, chip on cheeks there, you know, like it's squirrels holding the acorns in there. And it really is very, um, like, distracting when you see something like that. And they don't know what's going on. And all of a sudden you see them, they look small and then they look huge. Um, it hurts, you know, to have that sort of mass, muscle mass sitting there. So when you reduce it, it thins it out. Now, you do have to be careful because you don't want to thin them out too much, so sometimes you have to sacrifice 
you know, one or the other. You know, sometimes if it really, really helps you, you can keep doing it. Sometimes when you treat the mass of the muscle, you also have to treat the muscle that pairs called the pterygoid muscle. And that's another one that starts kind of popping out and looking weird as somebody's like a clincher, clincher, clincher. But it really makes a difference. If we're okay to get the, you know, I kind of think we're close to finishing the look, sir. She really does look good. Um, okay, go ahead and look in here down so they can see you up there. The TV world. Well, they did ask if you could do this for just a tiny touch while she, or he can come. How about we get a little bit? Okay, we'll get a little closer with Christina. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Okay. So I use Sculptra up here, up here, okay, and you can kind of see the difference of how it's, this was the bad side to start with, so it already is higher than the other side, so it kind of gave her a lift. We have contour the cheek with contour. We use wrestling uh, lip with the jawline and just giving her a sharper uh, like a angle on her jawline here. We want it as 45 degrees, we can. We don't want like this really elongated straight line going down there. That's when I was calling it the horse chin. <laughs> yes, that's me. Um, so I have to put a lot in mind. And it's part of aging. We just lose that angle. And it's the, the, again, the pulling. So we elongated a little bit further with the wrestling lift into the jawline. We used a little bit of contour and the chin. Yeah, kiss. I'm sorry. We did kiss. And, I, and again, there's a lot of options for in here. But this is kiss right in here. And then we did a little kiss here because she's actually a pretty good smile. Okay. And it looks nice and it looks natural. And we just put a little here. This was the side that was kind of dropping earlier. And we have like some before pictures that she does look a little lesser on this one side. But now she doesn't. Now she actually looks lesser on the other side. So we have to fix the other side. So we are going to fix the other side after we're done. So let's have any questions that anybody has. And anything anybody wants to talk about really. We could talk about any of our devices. What and, makes Sculptra different from other fillers? Oh, good question. So, um, and my nurse practitioner and my PA definitely they can they can chime in here. Um, Sculptra is a tissue stimulator, so it's something that's actually going to make you grow collagen. Where the other products are hyaluronic acids that are are put in there, and they are exactly what they are when they are put in. They have a little bit of fluid with them, which absorb. But pretty much they stay like it is. Um, okay, let me just get one more for mm -hmm. one second. Uh, any other, does that, uh, hopefully that explains what it is. Um, I mean, we do have some other stuff that's coming up. It's pretty interesting. There's like a fat matrix um, that kind of grows. It's pretty nice. Got some of that going on here. Um, so this is less than a teaspoon amount. Okay, so we don't change people a lot. So when, you know, when somebody is worried, oh my gosh, that sounds like a lot. Now we've used, um, let's see, a bile, we did a bile sculpture, or we did probably like three syringes on her and, and some sculpture. So that, you would think that she would look huge and her face would be big. It actually looks thinner on this side than the other side and it's just the placement of it. So you don't have to look big and we are not over treating when we're using more than one and one, kind of usually doesn't work by itself. Not when you're doing the whole face. If you're just doing lips, one syringe is usually fine. But if you're beyond the lips, which most people are, you know, it's rare. Somebody's not going to have to do something else. It's it's very unusual to have like lip funkiness or anomaly. <laughs> you know, it's usually it's a cheek or it's up here. So it's kind of our job to help guide you. And we'll figure out, we'll help you. And you know, if there's like cost issues, which are always are. I mean, we all are, are human. And we also have a market tank, you know, so we're all in the same boat here together. It, it is, we, we can make plans for people. We can say, okay, we did two syringes today. In two months, we do another two syringes. And we kind of work that way. You don't have to necessarily do everything. Yes, thank you. Um, okay, so what other goodies? What other questions do we have? Can you go over again how long Sculptra lasts versus the other products that you use? Sure, sure. Time? Okay, so again, Sculptra is, again, one of my absolute favorites. However, it's not the one and only that we're going to have. Um, 
Sculpture is a product that is reconstituted, it's put in the face or the head or the wherever, I mean, we use it in the body, we use it in the thighs, we use it in a lot of places, and it grows collagen in it. So it's going to create collagen growth, which causes firming of the tissue, it causes more springiness, it causes better luminosity, so when the light hits the tissue, you actually glow more. So um, it really does make a difference in when somebody has kind of a dull look to their skin, that's fine, it's really good things. Um, when somebody has kind of a dull look to their face, and it's kind of, I can tell it's more, uh, and I hate to say this, because I'm in my, you know, we're all into menopause and most of the people in here, not in this room, I have to say, it's <laughs> kind of not fair. Um, but you really do change, and without your hormones, the skin just starts looking duller. It just doesn't turn over as well. You can put a little sculpture, like a kind of a sheet underneath the tissue, and it just gives like an amazing glow. I mean, we also get that. I actually would say our cool peel, when I use sculpture and then we do a cool peel on top, it's like, oh my gosh, what just happened? I mean, the skin just looks, I have never seen anything like this. And it's actually the, the cool peel, which is one of our newest devices in here. It is like the brand new off, off the shelf, uh, new CO2 laser that probably it's i don't know too many people that have this one yet even unbelievable the next change the texture of the skin it is just insane um and to not have the downtime too and that's like the big part for me is i don't want downtime you don't want downtime and that is kind of the goal in here is to always make sure less amount of downtime try to keep it as simple as possible not kill you because we know some of the stuff hurts we have nitrous like i said we, we do use some new medications if we need to um, most of the time, the topical mummy works for everything, though. And with the cool peel, you only use topical mummy. Yep. It, it, it's pretty wild. What is the cool peel addressing? <laughs> everything. <no. laughs> um, the cool peel is for um, texture. Texture, oh. the little the little wrinkles. It's kind of like sculpture on steroids, I have to say. It, it is creating. So it's burning. Okay, CO2 laser. We were talking about today. CO2 laser actually, it's burning the top of the skin. And you know, I don't want to. to I, I need to dumb it down, just and I don't mean that in a negative way, but just so you guys understand. So CO2 laser is looking for water in the skin, so it's kind of causing a steam injury, and the steam injury kind of takes a couple pieces off the surface, so a little bit of the surface comes off, but that's okay because this is all dead stuff on the top that you don't need anyway. It's causing like as we get older, the skin starts laying kind of funky. The light reflects poorly off of it. So when you have a smoother texture, the light's going to hit better. You know, that is why photographs, and actually with today's uh, event, I have like 65 million lights on me because otherwise I look old. Um, you know, it, you have to have a lot of light to reflect because it looks better. Um, the, uh, with the laser's taking off the surface, but it's also creating a little bit of injury, which creates collagen growth. You know, when we're doing the sculpture, it's creating a signal to the cells to grow collagen. And that's why we use these things is that we want to thicken up the tissue. You know, like I was saying, there's a fat matrix one that we have that helps you grow a little fat. We want that softness. And when you look at the, the first picture that I had with uh, Jennifer Aniston, when she was in her twenties, you know, she's obviously super young looking and it's because of that fatness um and the first one yes like on, on the left i mean you see that picture and you know both of them she's very young but obviously the one on the left is so young it's the softness and the fatness um that's there and we lose that fat as we age and we lose that that nice little spring to the skin and we go back to normal um, but that's what we're losing, and that's what, if we can start going back that direction, these are kind of like optical illusions that trick people's brain into thinking, you know, we're at a different age group, and kind of that's the purpose. <laughs> Is there a specific time to schedule a cool peel of the year? Um, actually, no. And in the past, CO2, in, this, in the past, because of South Florida, we actually do more CO2 in the summer because people have time off. And they just stay out of the sun. It's so hot here, nobody goes out anywhere in the middle of summer. So it, it's not a bad time. Now, with the cool peel, we're not having the issue with the sun exposure. We're not, you have, you, you look red for maybe, is it time to sun here even? No, oh, too bad. If she had one today, I'd show you what she looked like. You look red for maybe um, 24, 40 hours. You kind of look a little rough to the texture. Um, the roughness is probably day three to day five. Um, and you do some maintenance screens, but it really helps. Um, so you really can have 
very minimal downtime, just a little bit of paint mist that you can put makeup on the next day if you need it to. Um, so you don't have the big issues. You wear your sunscreen. You shouldn't go playing tennis and golf because those are just too intense down here. We're, we're too close to the equator to be doing that. You know, it is amazing. When you look at people who are in Chicago, they're indoors all the time, they're higher up at the equator, their skin looks so much better than ours they've been here in South Florida. That alone should like kind of go, ooh, I need to get out of the sun a little bit more because it really makes a big difference. This is something that would actually reverse that damage and it helps you kind of get back. But you know, you go back on the sun, you're gonna re-damage. Then you know what, you'll be back in for more cold peel because you're gonna see that it actually works. Will the cold peel damage any of the filler that you have? It's a different level. So um, am I going to fill you and do cold pill immediately after? No. But I definitely will say, you know, the, it's it's a high up uh, procedure. This is going to hit you in the very top layers of the tissue. The places that I'm putting these fillers are really kind of more into the fat layer. You know, and it is interesting because there's always a lot of data. It's like, you know, when you're injecting, what layer are you at? Honestly, at this point in my career, I can tell you, we don't know which layer we are in. You know, as long as we're in a safe zone, um, more than likely because of the way you have to inject, it's going to be below the, the, the tissue layer. So it's really kind of between uh, skin layer and fat. And then below that would be muscle and the bone. So you're really pretty deep with these. So we can use a lot of the, the fillers. But again, I wouldn't go do, I would do the, the laser first, and then I would do the filler like the next week. The laser, you might have a little bit of swelling, so it kind of, that's the only reason you want to get a couple days afterwards just to let some of the swelling come down. And does the cold peel get rid of brown spots? If so, how long does it take to get rid of them, and how long do they stay away? Um, it depends on the brown spot, honestly. The there, some of them are tough. I will tell you. Um, usually, when you do it now, when we do the cold peel, we tend to go pretty mild the first treatment, just because we want to see how your skin reacts. It's normally a, a package of three. So when you do the first one, we kind of stay in like between the lines really solid. You don't want to go off the reservation too far. If you have like a really dark spot, you know, and we're not thinking it's anything serious that we need to go see somebody else for a biopsy on, then we can hit it harder. Now the negative to that is it'll tend to turn pinky purple for maybe a week to two weeks. It could maybe even three weeks. Or it's a little bit different. I tend to say three weeks easy if I'm really hitting something hard. But it ends up going, the color goes away and you look normal and it doesn't scar. And then that's why we do it that way. So it does treat the dark spots. Um, so sometimes we have to use like pale laser in combination with it. Um, one of the things that we're actually doing is we're doing a special where we do the cold peel with actually the European peel, which is my favorite peel. Um, it's a TCA peel that you don't have downtime with people. You know, sometimes they don't even appreciate how good it is because they don't have the peel phase. You know, sometimes I think I have to make you guys suffer a little bit to let you see what it really looks like. But I will tell you, I'm not one who likes to suffer. And I will, the European peel really changes the quality of the skin too. So we're doing a special where we're doing the full peel and then you do a European peel, full peel, European peel. And the skin is just like blows off the charts. So. And how much is the full peel? How much is it? Um, if you're doing a single for the face, it's about a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Package of thirty twenty eight fifty for face only. See, I don't remember. <laughs> um, that's why they're here. Uh, so yeah, the package of three, and I think right now we're doing the 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 two free cold uh, the two European pills with yes. it. Yeah. So um, I, it is definitely something to take advantage of because I, that's my absolute favorite pill, and I don't tend to like acid peels too much. A TCA acid peel usually just rips your face off, and I just have no patience for that. I mean, want results without having to suffer personally. And you know, most of the people do, they just don't realize how good the results are because they're not suffering. So we will be happy to show you the before and afters because every time we show people, they're like, oh, I didn't know I'd look that bad to start with. You know, so it's kind of like, yeah. Um, we're all in the same boat, you know. I can gauge things a little bit better for myself because I'm just, you know, so aware of all this stuff. But most people don't really realize improvements sometimes. But we don't want you to look like something drastically changed on you overall. You know, we want results that look natural that people are like, oh my God, you did nothing. We took all your color off and you look, you know, weird. You know, we don't want strange things happening. We want people to look like they are just healthy, they're living a healthy lifestyle and this is what the result is.
and approximately how long the results last from the cool peel and the European peel? Um, well, definitely the separately. The cool peel will probably last like it depends on how where you're starting with. Like if you're starting with anybody you can hear, you're going to do three of them, and it's going to last you about a year, I would imagine. About nine months to a year, you're probably going to do a, a single, or maybe you're going to do a double. If you really wiped out of the summer, you're going to have to maybe do this sort of thing over again, the whole series. Um, it's going to be very individualized. If you're you know, 75 years old and you've been playing golf your entire life, you're going to probably need two series of three. And it gets, it, but in even one, you see a difference. So that's the, the nice part. Like if you have those barcode lines over your lips and the smoker lines, you really, you'll see a change, but you gotta keep working at it. And I promise you, you're never gonna 100% get rid of those. So don't even think that you're gonna try because it's not worth it to you. You're gonna look better. People are gonna see your huge improvement. You don't have to get every last line off the face. It's not the lines anyway. It's really the structure. It's the shapes that people recognize. So if you don't see any lines on me because of this camera, but you're looking at my shape and you assess me from that. That's what our brains like to do. They like to make quick decisions and dump information into both. Mm -hmm. Is the IPL still worthwhile in approximately how much is it? Oh, IPL is still great, yeah. IPL, oh, uh, it runs like 525 ish. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, it is, um, it, okay, so we were talking about this thing. So the safety laser is something that's actually causing like a skin injury, and it's causing t uh, tissue texture changes, like crepiness of the skin, like crack the cracks that we have. I mean, it is also fantastic, and it's, I think it's a little more uncomfortable than the cold peel, actually. Um, I think you get a little more result with the cold peel, but it's a different way. It's not taking the surface off, so it's kind of steaming the skin also. Um, IPLs, they're called intense pulse light, that's what it stands for, and it's a wavelength of light that is dialed in. We dial it to a color, we're dialing it to red, we're dialing it to brown. Um, you're trying to hone in on certain colors that people have. And it's pretty effective, I have to say, you know, if you're really just going for color. But if you're having color, usually you're having sun damage too, so that's why I kind of will tend to go maybe cool pill first, and then if you need a little cleanup with the eye pill, maybe I eye pill more afterwards. Um, and you know, if you're out there getting a lot of sun, you're gonna be needing probably more of this stuff just because you gotta be wearing sunscreen. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you is what other stuff do we do? And let me have our products over here. Um, so important. I know, you have to use things that are gonna keep your money safe because the stuff all costs a lot of money that we just talked about. Things that really work, and there is a line, and actually you see Pilgrima line now because they bought it, because it was smart. This is the all-time best neck cream. It's called the Restorative Neck, I don't even know what it's called, Restorative Neck Complex. I don't know, but I have this in my bathroom forever and ever. Um, until something better comes along, this is the one. This is a neck cream, I usually use it twice a day, and people see a difference, and it's, I've never seen, a, like, neck creams in the past never worked. This one actually does work. Elastin also came out with a new hyaluronic acid that is just lovely. Hyaluronic acids are really good for that crazy stuff, on the eyes. It kind of plumps the tissue up and gives you, like, a little softer appearance, um, so it's kind of hydrating the tissue, and my makeup of choice, which is our sunscreen, let's see if it's open, I'll open. Yep, okay. This one is a sunscreen, but it has color. And I've seen that guys use it too, and they look fine. It rubs in. Now, it does rub in totally natural. So when you put it on, you look like you don't have anything on. Um, but it is, has a little bit of camouflage, so it does, it does nice. Again, guys can use this one too, but it feels good. It rubs in nice. It's a mineral base. This one is, I don't even know what it is. It's an SPF 36. You want to always be like at least a 30 or higher, and you want a mineral, and that's what this one is. So they do make clear ones, but I actually think this one is awesome. Like I will use this and I'll go sweat and it won't get all over the place. But don't get it on like a white t-shirt when you put it on, mm -hmm. it will not come off. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, what are the dates? Can you explain what the European, is, European peel is again? Oh, sure, okay, it's a European peel. We call it that because it's actually from Italy. And it's a TCA peel. TCA peels in the past were like these really um, aggressive peels. We use them for acne, we use them for uh, sun damage. And you put it on, maybe somebody might remember the old blue smurf peel that we used with Obagi, maybe back in the day. Um, so what happens is um, the TCA peel really 
absorbs and lifts like the entire skin off. So you look like a skin off of that. Mm -hmm. And it was very uncomfortable. I mean, I couldn't tolerate the pain of it personally. Um, but there, so what happened in Italy is they took TCA and we modified the molecule slightly with hydrogen peroxide. And it's actually the pressure of the, the staff learning how to put the, this product on. We can still have you peel, but we don't want you to peel. I mean, that's the purpose of the things we do here is to not have you have downtime. So if we really want to rub this stuff in, we actually use four pounds of hand press. So we have a scale that we check our hands with before we do this. And we just make sure that we repeat in our brains how to do this because it's kind of muscle memory. But you, you rub it in. And if, if you don't rub it in hard enough, you can start peeling a little bit like the next day or two. Um, but you're using a, this PCA peel that takes the skin down. Again, anything that's going to insult the skin, it's going to take a couple layers off the top. It's going to uh, cause a little bit of an injury, and it's going to make collagen grow. And it helps with the brown stuff. It helps with kind of the glow to the skin. So your skin gets very glowy with it. And usually we do packages of three or four of them. And you can do anywhere in the body. I've done my legs. I've done everywhere. Really? Um, oh, no. <laughs> Come on. You guys know me. You should know I've done everywhere. I haven't done everywhere, but I've done that everywhere. <laughs> so um, it is, It is. A, I love the peel just because it's simple and you don't have the downtime with it. And TC peel is traditionally a very aggressive peel. So um, it's been around probably for about three or four years. We got it about a good year ago. And I probably have one, boy, at least one or two a month. Uh, when I'm a little bit more crazy, it's like every week I'm getting them. So, you know, everybody has their own little craziness. Do you ever inject filler below the muscle? Um, for what reason would I want to? You know, that's kind of the question is, do I do inject below the muscle? Um, if you're trying to create a pulley effect of the muscle, and you will sometimes get that with a needle, I don't think that it lasts any longer. You're still going to have compression of the product with the muscle contracting on top of it. If you really wanted to, like somebody has a really funky smile and they're like really skewed, you can really inject it into that area and try to get it. And it, it acts like more like a pulley, like a, like a fulcrum. So you have the muscle on top and you're putting it below it. You're, you're changing the way that the, the muscle moves. And I don't really, I don't want to go below the muscle. It hurts a lot. If you've ever felt your muscle injected, you wouldn't like it, um, I promise you. And people will say that they're in the muscle. How do they know they're in the muscle? You know, I think that's kind of a, a silliness that I kind of hear out there. So, you know, and I, I know people like to say things because it sounds like, oh, I'm doing something special for you. Um, the majority of the time, everything's going to go in the subcutaneous zone. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, it is going to be very, you're, you're going to, some of it is going to get in the muscle kind of by accident more than on purpose. Do you still need to massage Sculptra? Yes. Um, I don't if it's in the scalp. Um, I We'll live with the little lumps that are going to come later. And again, for people who've ever done a sculpture with me, you are probably going to get some lumps in the head, and I got plenty up there. Um, <laughs> I'm crazy in my head too, but um, the the lumps are something that is just the sculpture. It's your skin, really, almost you know the 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 muscle that's on top of the cranium is very thin. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have some little bumps that you're going to feel. So it's almost hair skin, muscle, cranium, and it's like this thick, teeny, teeny. Um, so you don't have a brain tumor if you have Sculptra and you feel a lump in your head later, every so often, I know we're giggling, but I have had people who went and got MRIs and I, I was worried I had something in my head and I'm like, oh, I told you, you, you're gonna get lumps in the head. Don't think that you're, you have a brain tumor. I mean, if you're having falling down visual problems, any of that stuff, go, go get checked for a brain tumor. But this is not the time is you can know you got something put in here um, in that area. But if we're doing it in the face, yes, we're going to massage. I personally do four times a day for four days for four minutes. That's our protocol. You can do it five times a day for five days for five minutes. I bet you most people do it for about two or three times a day for two or three days. Mm -hmm. um, now, we have kind of circumvented that, and we're not going to let you get lumpy because it's not good for anybody. Um, that's why we put nine cc's of fluid in it. When the, the product first came out in 2004, we used three cc's of fluid, and yes, people would get little nodules in their face, and it just took to go away. It was not something reversible. Um, 
there was really no way to get rid of them. They, I mean, we tried a lot of stuff, but it's probably just time that took care of it more than anything, so we're injecting everything into them. Um, so uh, I think, you know, we went up to six cc's. When you do six cc's of fluid, you actually really see what it's going to look like later. When you put nine cc's of fluid, it's slightly more filled than what you're going to see later. Mm -hmm. So I like the six cc's, but there's ever so often somebody who's a little skinny, nine-year-old lady, she's going to have a lump in her face somewhere with the six cc's. You're better using a higher dilution and just spreading out the material a little bit better. Um, I'm just looking at it. Can you talk a little bit about threads and Morpheus as well? Yeah. Um, real quick. Uh, something that we are very strong on here, and before I talk about Morpheus and threads, we are very, very pro using something called hyaluronic base, and that is magic racer for hyaluronic acid. Um, I use hyaluronic base a lot in the office. I use it for my own things that like, people uh, kind of have some funky happen. Hyaluronic acid does shift. It does shift in the spaces. And, you know, that would maybe be the only other reason I'd consider saying maybe muscle injection might be better because maybe it would stay there a little bit more. I don't know. Um, but, you know, if you're sleeping and you're sleeping on your face all night, sometimes that, that product in there ends up higher up. And sometimes you see little gobs of stuff there and someone comes in there like, I didn't have this last month, but I have a bump here. And it's obvious that I was doing this hyaluronic acid and it takes us all of about three seconds to, to fix it. So if you have weird under eye lumps that you've gotten because you know you got filler, they are treatable. You know, we do have, it's a small charge if it's not our own issues meaning I didn't do it to you, um, but it, it's not, we don't punish anybody for this because it's just part of the world. And, you know, I have to use hyaluronic base every so often. If I make my groups too big and work more than I do, I can bring it down. And that is the nice part about hyaluronic acids. Sculpture, you can't do that with. Radius, you can't do that with. Radius is another product we use for jawline. It's really nice because it's stiff, but it is, it's hard and you can get a little modules with that with the teams with too. Um, Morpheus and threads. Threads are very dear to my heart. For those people who have had it with me, it's a love-hate relationship, I will tell you. They can be uncomfortable, but they can also give you a facelift in about five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I usually use them with sculpture because it holds them in place longer, because that is one of the negative things to the threads. If you use threads alone and you're not using like a million of them, you are going to see the face fall, you know, probably within about four to six months. You're just not seeing the love anymore. Um, and it, it's, it's, you know, for, for going through it, you want to see it for a while. So I usually add sculpture with it because it holds it in place. It kind of grows the threads into place. And as the threads dissolve, they actually cause more collagen growth. Everything has to go collagen. Um, so I usually use a vial of sculpture mixed with the threads. And that's kind of the magic number that I found that works really well. Um, and that usually lasts like about nine months, so that's a pretty nice look. And to get a facelift in ten minutes is huge. Um, every so often, you get a, you get like one of the little threads has a little barbs on it, and you feel it, you're like, oh, this is uncomfortable. And usually, I just wiggle it off of there. We use a little radio frequency and it comes it down. So there are ways that we can help you. It's never a permanent just uh, uncomfortableness, but it can be uncomfortable. And, and if somebody has a lot of like fear of it. We just use a lot more lidocaine. Again, we have micros, we have other things, and we have had, you know, over, you know, we're, we're always trying to find a better way to make this less painful for you. Morpheus and Virtue are two versions of radio frequency. Actually, even Morpheus B and uh, Formiva, we use a lot of radio frequency in the office. Radio frequency is, is a heat that is going to create a little minor tissue injury, which actually creates collagen growth. Again, you know, everything is about the, kind of when you injure stuff, it actually grows. Um, so we use Morpheus 8 on the face. We use Morpheus body on the on the body. Um, we do it here, and we also do it by squad. Um, we do Forma B and uh, Morpheus B uh, for the women's health issues. Um, those are fantastic. You're tightening the skin, rejuvenating the skin, giving um, the firmness back to the tissue. What things are the ones on the mouth um, probably the cool peel is my number one for lines, you know, the, the, the little lines running out. You know, we can use some filler, but sometimes, you know, and, and it's usually a combination. It's not going to be one thing. You know, it's going to be a cool peel and then maybe some filler. 
you know, and if you have no lip shape, you have to have some lip shape, you know, because even if you don't have lines there, if you have no lips, it still looks funny. It's like, no, no, I don't like the look. So you really need to do um, whatever the face truly needs is number one. And that's, you know, we help you kind of decide that sort of stuff. The, um, I would say if you're really going for the crepey skin, the cool peel, if you're looking for falling skin, it's more like the Morpheus. If you're looking at uh, shaping, you're looking more at fillers, um, sculptra. Um, if you're looking at getting rid of a muscle action, like a frown, you're looking more at Dysport, Botox like products. If you're looking at treating bands, which, you know, again, the neck, you can treat it with the neurotoxin, which is like the Dysport. You can do the, the uh, radio frequency products. You can do the um, Copio laser. You know, you do everything you can um, because it's it's not one thing that's really going to do the whole thing for you. You know, sometimes we, I see these people that come in and I have to dissolve all the filler because I've been putting this monkey lip thing going on here where this, you know, they hate the lines and, and people just keep filling and filling and filling. And, and you look at them from the side of it, like Marge Simpson, you know, yeah. it's like, and it's not even the lip, it's the skin above it. So, yeah. And, you know, we have a lot of um, terms for these funny looks that come in, a month and thing. Sometimes people come in and, and all they want is this, this, this. And they end up looking like an orangutan because it flattens them so much that from any view other than the mirror, it looks weird. You know, it's, it's our responsibility to educate you and make sure that you understand why we're doing what we're doing. You know, that's why we show you the skeletal pictures. That's why we show you the many views of your own face because we always show you what you look like, what you did last time, how you look now versus last time. If it's been a couple of years, sometimes you tend to see what the aging is doing to you. So we, we, this is a partnership and we have fun doing it. And, you know, our heart is really to take care of you. And at the end of the day, you know, we've been so thrilled and grateful that everybody has trusted us so much with this. Do threads dissolve over time? Yes, threads do dissolve over time. So threads are made out of a material called PDO. And it's one of the suits that we've been using for many, many years in surgery. And um, it is kind of, it's a pretty sturdy uh, absorbable suture. And what they do is when they make them, they kind of make little, they call them cogs, and they, I call them barbs, but they look like little baby fish hooks on them. And I know that sounds horrible, um, but it really is much less. If you saw it, it looks like a little millimeter legs on it. It's like little teeny little bites there. So it, it's very, very innocuous. Um, they usually come blue, the thing they want to know. It's a dye that absorbs after about a you know, week or two. Um, and then the body just turns into the collagen over time. And if someone doesn't want to do threads, are there other alternatives that you recommend? Oh, so for sure. Um, so so threads are a fantastic lifter. Um, if somebody really is, is nervous or they're afraid to do threads, um, a lot of times I'll just use a lot more Sculptra. Um, Sculptra is kind of like a thread, actually. Like Sculptra and thread are almost the same product. Um, Sculptra is just more of a powder that I can put more diffusely. A thread is more direct and it actually pulls. And it does pull the whole face right up. So it is, a, it's like, if you've never had them and you're kind of thinking about it, at least try it once. And even if you've had them and they were uncomfortable, try it again. Because one time to the next is going to be maybe a different experience. So, but they, there's nothing like the, the lift that you get. I mean, it just changes the whole jawline. It changes the way the neck looks. Um, but again, it's, it's one product. It's sometimes I have to use threads and Voluma together. Sometimes I have to use sculpted threads, Voluma, you know, the lips. So it, it's just depends on what's going on with your own face and how we can get you there. Mm -hmm. Lots of love here. I really appreciate everything mm -hmm. that you shared today. Oh, I can't speak with you. Because mm -hmm. I got the best patients in all of South Florida. Right. We don't allow not nice patients. So <laughs> just remember that. If you're in the group, you're in the group. <laughs> um, anyway, so appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with us. I have to finish the other side of her face because she's going to kill me if I tell her. Because she has a little bit of the poor little races. Yeah. All right. Um, we are having the specials here that we put up for you. You, when you do the two vials of Sculptra, you get a free level two just for it. So that's usually like the, between the eyes and the forehead. Um, if you're doing three syringes of the rest of the product, and it's any of the rest of the products, um, you're going to get a level three just for it, which is the whole upper phase. Um, you can even do your two vials of Sculptra and use your two levels in your neck if your neck looks bad, because that really helps. <laughs> 
and we can also do like a Nefertiti uh, jawline lift with the Discord. There's so many fun things we could do, but please, please, please take advantage of it. And we are going to do a drawing, and somebody is going to win the full face correction with Christina, and it is it's a five thousand dollar value, and it is absolutely worth it because you want to look good, like we all want to look good. Just because looking good feels good. Anyway, so maybe get your mom a, uh, since this is a Mother's Day event, and I actually do have the best mom in the world, um, I will tell you, give yourself, give your mom a very nice present and get some free, uh, just pour on top of it with it. So take care of it. Take care of your moms out there. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Love you. Bye. 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 Take care.